Oh, that's right. That was a broken level. Uh, broken board level. Yeah, that was really cool. That level was really interesting. I kind of want to go back and get the other ones now, but, uh, no. First... I really wanted to start my next game today, and I still might do that. I've got time. I'm gonna start Many Assassin's- Many ages have passed since the first words were spoken in the darkness. Initiate program. Generations of your kind have come and gone since those words. The garden has changed many times. But I remember. I remain. Only within me can you find immortality. Cool. Um, I wanted to start Assassin's Creed 2. I've never played an Assassin's Creed game before. That would be my very first. I've heard you can skip the first one. It's like so dated at this point, I guess. I don't know. I've never played it. Um, but like, I thought of something to try here at least. I'm not sure it'll work. Which is fine. So now we're gonna do this. Take this. And point it at Weathertop. Oh, come on. I can see it from here. Let me do it. It's like glitched out, disappearing anyway. Uh, this is bullshit. That was, that was my one idea. I was pretty excited for it. I can reach across here? But not to Weathertop. They were like, nah, we can't be having you solve that one too easily or anything. Okay, well, I'm here. I'm here now. Can I think of anything else? That was like my one idea. And it didn't pan out. Okay, I spent enough time going over that place before. I'm done. I'm done with it for now. Moving on to level five. Three stars in here, geez. Party on, dudes! <laughs> Land party. Yo, I don't know if you folks realize, but it's the end of the world. There's nothing we can do about it, so instead of sitting around crying, how about we have some fun before we croak? Yes, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Let's play some video games. It's land party time. Two days from now, we're all getting together at the old school library. There will be noms, drinks, music, and old school gaming. You're invited and bring your friends too, especially if they're hot. See you in 3000 BC. Philosophy of teeth? Last night I had a simple but brilliant idea. Everyone who would like to write about philosophy or spirituality, especially to make some kind of grand statement about the nature of the body and the soul, should first experience a really bad tooth infection. <laughs> I don't just mean a slight toothache, I mean the hardcore, the kind of hardcore infection that happens when several incompetent dentists miss a cavity in one of your back teeth and the thing keeps growing and growing until the nerve itself is really badly infected. I wouldn't wish that on anybody, oh my god. I mean, the pain is unimaginable. It comes in waves, and these waves drown out everything else about you. You can't talk, you can't move, you can't think. There's just pain and absolutely nothing else. It's like your brain just gets hijacked by it. And then you go to the dentist, and assuming you get a decent one, they stick some chemicals in you, which make you go numb. Then they drill a hole in you, cut the nerve, snip, snip, and it's over. Just like that, just like repairing a car or a watch. Your whole existence was crippled by this tiny, tiny nerve sending electrochemical signals into your brain. 
And this unimaginable pain, which nearly blotted out your very consciousness, can be stopped just by a little cut. We should call this the Toothos Principle, but that's incredibly stupid. <laughs> yeah, um, that's my constant existence. I can't use one of my teeth. I can't chew on it because if anything hits it, it's the pain is so mind-numbingly terrible. Yeah, I gotta go to the dentist. <laughs> uh, have you seen the American healthcare system? We've gotten to that irritating point where all the major stuff is in place, and all we have to deal with are the million little things, are a million little things. The main modules are all functioning and interacting with each other correctly. The process is happening more or less as planned. This could actually work, but it's still crude as hell. Some of it is just surface stuff, like the random usernames. Some of it's more worrying, various bugs, the fact we haven't run more expensive, extensive tests. We've gotten a lot of we've got a lot of polishing to do. With the team down to half the original size, I'm not sure we can actually finish everything that needs to be done. So what I'd really like to discuss tomorrow morning is a new set of priorities. Please put some thought into what you think must be finished at all costs. P.S. Alexandra gets some sleep. I know you're still working. <laughs> this is your baby. We're going to need your input tomorrow. That's kind of interesting. Um, you know, they say, like, no video game has ever shipped without some bugs. Well, what if there was more at stake than just it being a video game? I mean, I don't know about how many databases exist out there that don't have any bugs. When the scale of it all overwhelms me, this is what I tell myself. We can calculate the age of the Earth, the size of the universe, the future of the stars. Sure, we are minuscule, momentary flashes of thought on a grain of sand drifting through the cosmos. But our minds can recreate the past and predict the future. On, say, Friday, a million years from now, we'll all be dead. But right now, we know what the night sky will look like on that day. And so, in a way, we're not entirely bound by time. Knowledge is a, a kind of freedom. Yeah, that's true. Uh, I like that. Hmm. This is just the, this, right? That is true. We do know an awful lot of things, don't we? Oh my gosh, this this seems too simple. Like, so simple that there's no way I can possibly get it to work. Okay, but something needs to be here at all times. And here. And here. Okay, so um, we can do this with two connectors. There's a ladder there. So it must be possible to trap yourself in here. Because it's timed, because of the playback mechanic. So there's going to be two boxes and my ghost to stand on the pressure plates. And then there's going to be, I haven't actually tried to connect the uh, real connectors to the ghost connectors. I'm assuming that that'll work because there's no other way to do this. Okay, so what my ghost is gonna have to do first.
Actually, this will have to be here first. Because my ghost will have to connect this here. Yep, you can see that through the window. Or I can just probably leave that as is. Uh, my ghost can leave that there. What's going to happen is Actually, all I need to do is stand on this for a little while. <laughs> I think I keep trying to imagine that all of this is designed for some purpose. Not just the challenges, but Elohim, the terminals, the glitches and all. The puzzle isn't before our eyes, it's behind them. Shut up, Milton. I don't... None of those things matter to me. <laughs> oh, there's a different terminal. I'm right on top of it. <laughs> Where is it? It's on the other side of this wall, probably. Reader responses to last week's article on science and atheism. I am perfectly aware of all the arguments against religion. In fact, I agree with most of them. There is no question that there is an objective, material reality. I'm also absolutely convinced that only a secular society can be truly equal and just. And yet I believe, and yet I believe, I am, as they say, a person of faith. Religion to me is not about distorting observable reality with superstitions, but about transcendence. It's not about deluding ourselves that the earth is 6,000 years old or God will help us if we say the right words inside our heads, but about reaching out to the sublime. This is not a rejection of reason, but it's application to a set of experiences that cannot be approached by more traditional means. True engagement with religion is humbling. It transcends culture, nationality, and gender. As such, I think it goes hand in hand with science and is not opposed to it. Yeah, I actually believe that. I do. I agree with this. Ideally, anyway, religion is just something that helps you gain transcendence. I guess that's a good way to put it. It's about personal spirituality. However, it means a lot more in today's society to be religious. Uh, religious institutions are problematic, kind of top-down across the board, in my experience anyway to my knowledge. 
In his remarkable 1978 essay, How to Build a Universe That Doesn't Fall Apart Two Days Later, Philip K. Dick discusses the two themes that are most central to his work, what is reality and what is an authentic human being. His speculations and experiences will seem extraordinary to a reader unfamiliar with his work, yet despite what may seem like far-fetched ideas, somehow the world of the Bible is a literally real but veiled landscape, never changing, hidden from our sight, but available to us by revelation. Or the notion that perhaps we all exist in the year 50 AD, Dick actually delivers one of the simplest, most elegant, and most useful definitions of reality ever formulated. Reality is that which, when you stop believing in it, doesn't go away. Materialist philosophers have expressed similar ideas before, for example, Stratton of Stagira's Talos Principle, but it's particularly interesting to see such a thought expressed by a decidedly more mystical writer. See, that's interesting because I would think that a lot of religious people, at least again in my experience, would argue that not believing in God doesn't mean God goes away even though we don't have any actual evidence of God's existence. There's no way to prove or disprove God's existence. I mean, I, the logical fallacy of disproving something with no evidence. That's a thing, but uh, I, I don't think that this would hit for, for some people. Or it's like, just because I don't perceive it doesn't mean that it doesn't exist, that it isn't real would be something to add on to this thought. Whether or not you believe in something and it goes away or not has nothing to do with whether or not you perceive it. So in that way, reality is unknowable to us. Yeah, I think that's kind of part of the point though. We can't know if God is real. <laughs> we just can't. I don't believe he is, but you know, a lot of people do. True, there are certain idealist books, not of a clerical character. Oh, say that six times fast. But philosoph philosophical ones, wherein you can read that time and space are categories of our minds, that they result from the requirements of our thinking, and that nothing actually corresponds to them in reality. But it is difficult to agree with this view. If any idealist philosopher, instead of arriving in time to catch the 9 p.m. train, should turn up two minutes late, he would see the tail of the departing train and would be convinced by his own eyes that time and space are inseparable from material reality. The task is to diminish this space, to overcome it, to economize time, to prolong human life, to register past time, to raise life to a higher level and enrich it. This is the reason for the struggle with space and time, at the basis of which lies the struggle to subject, to subject matter to man. Matter, which constitutes the foundation not only of everything that really exists, but also of all imagination. Is there like a Talos Principle book club? <laughs> There's got to be a forum somewhere where everybody just talks about all the passages and stuff. What do they mean? Who wrote them? What's the context in which they were actually written? Why did they choose to share them in this game? I guess, again, similarly to The Witness, it's just kind of arbitrary what the devs thought was interesting and what they thought maybe related to the subject at hand. Well, that's just mean. <laughs> that must be the sigil. What the fuck? I have an idea. Oh, come on. Ooh. I'm assuming that if I stand here, it can get me. I'm assuming it can't protect me. 
Not sure why that's always funny. But it is. It is. Okay, I know that it can't get me if I'm on top of it, but I can't take the jammer from on top of it. That was my one idea. Yikes. <laughs> what the fuck? It's kind of fucked up that, um, that it can blow me up through a box. I mean, I guess that makes sense. You're still close. Close enough. I tried so hard. Well, I don't even know what direction it's really going. Is it going this way? I guess it doesn't really matter if I can't get it. What the fuck? I do not know what to do. Platform's gotta be here for a reason, right? Yikes. Um, holy shit. This is what I'm working with here. I don't know what to do. I can't believe it. This is the quickest I have been flat out stumped in any of these. They give me two boxes to try to get a jammer away from a bomb. What am I supposed to do with that? Oh my god. And then there's a whole bunch of other shit happening in here. It's not a matter of timing. It's a matter of logic. It's a matter of logical steps involved. I know that when I take the jammer, the bomb will move and it will blow up on me instantly I mean if I can I put myself just far away enough I don't think that's I, th I keep thinking maybe it'll hit the box and it won't be able to come close enough to blow me up but um This is how close I have to be to take the jammer. That's too close. It just is. It's too close. What if I stand on top of two boxes? Oh, okay. That was it. That was it, everybody. <laughs> that was painful. Can't keep this open any other way. That 
be too easy. minigun is the problem. The problem. I have a feeling all of these will be problems. And even this being off to the side. Oh shit. <laughs> it like threw me off the platform. Thing is like right in the way anyway. <sighs> Stuck again. Oh my goodness. Who designed this one? I have some words. Okay, again, this platform is here for a reason. For enough time? Oh, it doesn't even go far enough. That's baloney. I have to put both boxes on. Oh my god. Thing almost pushed me down. Gotta be careful where you put stuff. get down here. I assume this has something to do with the star. How am I gonna get down there? This isn't safe for me to be... Well, maybe if you jump on top of the second box you're up high enough? Test that real quick. Although I, it's not going to take me far enough, even if I'm up high enough. I guess I have to jump. I still feel like there's room to explore over there, over on both sides. There's some, there's some blind, blind spots over here. Well, uh, if we don't find anything else, 
If we find everything else we need, I'm just gonna assume that there's nothing there. Time flies. Not the time flies! If a sigil eludes you, simply continue. Success and failure are irrelevant. I solved it. I thought it was impossible, so I went away, did other things, and then all of a sudden the solution just came to me. I must have been thinking about it without knowing it. Here's what's gonna happen. Oh my goodness. Okay, what's what's gonna happen is the ghost is gonna put the box and the connector here. But how do you connect? Oh man. There's gonna be even more steps involved than I saw it, huh? The ghost is gonna have to put connector like this or we'll just leave it there for a second since I've got it there uh, we'll take this box first how do we get through how do we get through the fan so we're gonna the ghost is going to leave this take the fan put it here and then take this connector. Myself, my real self, will have to connect this directly with this and this. So once I take this away, it should support itself. At least I hope. So the ghost has to leave this for a few minutes, as is, and then take this and put it here. without disconnecting. So this all has to be connected to start with. This is gonna be weird. Just gonna... Do I actually need to bring the connector back there? Will it just be high enough? Oh, it'll just be high enough. So I don't need to bring anything back. This can probably stay on. Okay, I'm gonna have to give myself time, which means taking this and holding it for a minute. and then standing there. Honestly, I think it's simple enough. <laughs> Famous last words. Take this for a minute. I'm going to take the box, put it here, and then take the connector and put it on top. Thank you. 
I won't even get high enough.
Okay, what the fuck? see both of these at the same time. That'll turn this door on too, probably, so you really have to come at it from this way, but you can't. Because of all the gates. There's a tiny little sliver through this window, but I think that points to a wall. Yeah. Uh, I, will it let you get in this tiny little space here? I don't like this. I feel like all I'm looking for is one space where I can hit all three things. I don't know. But like, we cannot hit this one from anywhere else. I don't get it. I don't get it. Yeah, even stacking them on top of two boxes wouldn't reach this. This is the only way to get to this one. From It's right here. stuff going on back there to figure out how to get to. Gosh, it's infuriating. I maybe I could like get back in here with the connector, but that's not gonna work. Because we need this on for that door to be open. I'm getting irate at this. I'm just going to rest here for a while. I need a moment of peace. Destiny can wait. No, that's the last one! Fuck. This isn't making any sense to me! I mean, what more would we need to do but turn on all of these things, both of these things, at the same time? I think if it floated on those boxes, it could reach the uh, end conduits, but not the actual power source, which would be a problem. I tried to just jump over these walls a little bit. I couldn't do it. Can't hug a box over there. I need another connector. <laughs> this, this doesn't work. This doesn't work. We have literally one space that we can put one to make this one turn on. Our end goal is to push something onto this pressure plate. I need both of these fans on in order for that to happen. To turn the fans on, we need to connect a power source to them. It has to be this, from here. There's a star. Oh, this will come down. Once we get the star. Dare I burn a hint already? I can't just jump in bringing something with me. Is it possible for me to leave an object somewhere where I can reach it from here? Is there another way to get something in here? I'm gonna go take a walk.
Where could that dust me? I don't even know how to get out there. It actually lowered the gate? Oh. Come on. <laughs> I need a box in here or something. Sit in here, huh? That's two stars out of three. So there is one more. Perhaps it is back in there. Yeah, okay, that's where the sigil is. I could walk on this wall. I could just jump in there. <sighs> I need three boxes for that. I would need three boxes to get on top of this wall, I think. Let's see what the hint says. There aren't many of the steps in the world, but you should be sure you really need your help, our help, before you proceed. Yeah, I kind of want to see what kind of hints they give. Blow it up, then blow it over. I know, I know that much though. But they're basically telling me, yeah, that's it. That's the way to do it. Like. Don't fart around with some other weird shit. Just, just do it. Alright, I don't know what to do. Been recording for like two hours now. I have to come back to this. This is not working out for me.